Welcome to the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. The Stop COVID Deaths shorts make it easier for you to go to the presentations that you are interested in. I'm Dr. Raymond Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center. And I'm Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado, Adjunct Faculty of the National Telehealth Center. Together, Together let's, let's stop, stop COVID deaths. deaths. We'd like to thank you very much for giving us a chance no, to present yung mga ginagawa ng UPC Ball team. And later on, you will find out kung ano ba talaga ang UPC Ball. Okay. So, I will start off with this slide. Almost all medical devices present in developing countries have been designed for use in industrialized countries. Consequently, they are often unaffordable and are maladapted to low resource settings. So these were statements made 10 years ago. But up till today, I don't think things have changed very much. So take a look at this equipment, at the biomedical equipment and devices, some of which you are very... Uh, in need of during the COVID pandemic. Pero, if you look at these devices, everything is imported. So, is it any wonder why we always don't have enough? Why we always can't afford them? And worse, why pag nasira yung spare parts, hindi siya available? So, Ang question ninyo is, why don't we go ahead and make them, di ba? It requires engineers and scientists on the one hand. It requires clinicians and healthcare workers on the other hand. But most importantly, it requires for them to work together. And even if there are pockets of these individual teams working and successful on innovations, so far, wala pa talagang mature na institution which allows this kind of collaboration. I will, um, I think there are, for example, sa La Salle has already taken an initiative to come up with what they have now called the Institute of Biomedical Engineering and Health Technologies or IBET. And then, of course, there's a Philippine Biomedical uh, Innovation Consortium. But aside from those, Wala talagang ibang mga uh, collaborations like that. And that separation between the engineers and the, and the healthcare workers is evident even in our own institution, the University of the Philippines. So nasa diliman yung mga engineers and scientists, nasa Manila yung mga clinicians, parang naka-separate by the big Pasig River. So we never really get to collaborate with each other. In March of 2019, that's when the opportunity started. Ang UP Diliman College of Engineering, TTBDO director at that time si Michay Pasha, got in touch with UP Manila asking for clinicians to collaborate with some of their engineering proposals. And on our side sa UP Manila, the, 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 the request was sent to the NIH director, si Eva Cotionco de La Paz. Pero to avoid the horrendous traffic of going to Diliman, ang ginawa namin, nag-teleconference kami. And lo and behold, the teleconference was successful. So in April 2019, we went to the College of Engineering sa Diliman and doon nag-present kami ng mga medical problems requiring engineering and science solutions. And that was very successful. And in May, ang nangyari was we invited the engineers and the scientists to visit sa PGH para makita nila exactly what's going on. These are the things that they needed to help us innovate on. And as a result of that, through many, many months of uh, collaboration, we came out with four collaborative projects under the program, which was then Kristen Siebel. So this is the UP Surgical Innovation and Biotechnology Laboratory. And this program proposal was submitted to the DOST-PCHRD. And ang Christmas gift sa amin ng DOST-PCHRD was we were given a grant to start this program. And this is on your left-hand side. Kita mo yung uh, grant na binigay ng DOST PCHRD. And so, ang next step really was to come up with a MOA. So, nag-sign na ng MOA between DOST and UP Manila. Pero, not all good things can continue like that. So, ang nangyari, as we all know, COVID struck. And sunod-sunod na yun. Soon, we were on complete lockdown. And worse than that, 
so many of our comrades fell. We saw so many people falling along the side. And very often, it was because of lack of protective equipment. There were lack of uh, distancing, lack, lack of different uh, mechanisms to protect our healthcare workers. So at that time, Seabol was recently born. So while there was a MOA, wala pa yung pera, no infrastructure, no equipment, but that was our reason for being. Seabol had to do something. And even if we didn't have the money and the infrastructure and the equipment, we had two things. We had Viber and we had Zoom. And by June of 2020, we were convened. Uh, we convened ourselves in March of uh, 2020 and in three months' time, we had 11 projects. And these 11 projects were divided into three teams, basically to protect, to disinfect, and to distance. So, eti yung three uh, teams and their 11 projects. And you will notice that each of the projects is handled by an investigator and the, and the co-investigator, one of which is a clinician and the other one is either an engineer or a scientist. And so you have the PPE team, you have the disinfection team, and you have the telemonitoring team to do those three uh, thrusts that we had. And sa umpisa, since syempre, the money was not there yet from the initial program, we had no money and we looked for uh, funding. And we approached the OSTPCHRD and they were very, very helpful. They were going to give us grants for each of the different proposals that we had. But then, no matter how much you expedite this kind of a process, Siyempre, hindi man agad-agad pupunta yung makakakuha tayo ng pera for that purpose. So we relied a lot on private sponsors. And here, I do have to thank my classmates from high school. The Savior High School class responded by donating, and, and their donations were the initial funding for the seed money for our initial prototypes. So here on the right-hand side, you see some of these prototypes and some of these projects. No? Uh, later on, three of Three out of the four projects here, you will be hearing from their inventors and innovators. So here I give you an I gave you an idea of how the Seabol team came about and kung ano yung purpose ng Seabol team. So it's a surgical innovation and biotechnology laboratory. And ang purpose namin really is to innovate, invent, and create locally made biomedical equipment and devices using local expertise, and locally available materials. And so you will be hearing this morning more about these products. So I will start off with one of these products. And the project that I am deeply involved with is called the Sanipad. So ito yun. Ano yung Sanipad? You heard Dr. April Llaneta no, from the Emergency Medicine Department talk about the Sanipad. And so, at the, dito, dito niyo makikita yung pictures of exactly what the Sanipad is like. And here, before I start, syempre, I would like to recognize the co-investigators, the engineers, starting from Prof. Magdaluyo, my co-investigators, Dr. Catherine Ko, Engineer Pichardo, our industrial designer, August Pataxil, and our science research specialist, Jenna Gonzalez. So, ito yung backgrounder. So, kayo, as healthcare workers, coming out of heavily infected areas or COVID areas, naka PPE kayo. But when you're doffing the contaminated PPE, that is a source of infection, a source of contamination to the healthcare worker, to the safety officers, to the disposal service personnel, the people who clean up after us, yung, yung ating PPE, people have to dispose of it. So they will be exposed to it. So, dito papasok ngayon yung sanipad. So after the doffing, uh, uh, before the doffing, the healthcare worker goes through the sanipad. So the biomedical engineering solution here is to clean off the PPE before you doff. So what does it do? It protects the healthcare worker. It protects the safety officer. It protects eventually the disposal team. And the added bonus is, ngayon na dumadami na naman yung cases and kumukonti na naman yung supply na ng, ng PPE, it addresses the short supply of PPE because you can reuse them. Okay, so yung innovation, ang question natin is how are we different from all of these nakikita niyo yung mga contamination tents, etc., yung decontamination tents, etc. Ano yung difference namin? 
the sunny pod is self-contained, no touch, so less chance of contamination. There are many mechanisms to decrease contamination. So there's a controlled release of disinfectants. There's an automated disinfection process. It's portable. It's intuitive. It's intuitive user. In, uh, there's an intuitive user interface. It uses the HEPA filter, may shower, may irradiation. And like all the other projects in the UPC ball program, they are based on science. There is evident, it, everything is evidence-based for safety and efficacy and all the other parameters. So we have the assurance to the user of the safety, the efficacy, and all of these have been tested by clinicians, scientists, engineers from both UP Diliman and UP Manila, and they pass the international standards. So these are the basic features of the Sanipad. Of course, you have the frame, you have the door and mechanism, disinfection system, the HEPA filter, the blower, the UBC, the drain, the electricals, and the pathogen challenge. So what I'm saying here is, kahit na maraming prototypes na, each prototype is based on these uh, principles always. No? So ito yung prototype one. And uh, itong prototype one, I will show you. This was at the time na wala pa kaming pera talaga. So this was an air shower from the College of Engineering na condemned na. So this was converted. You see the healthcare worker enters. And pati yung, yung, yung noise, no? <laughs> alam na alam ninyo na uh, condemned uh, air shower na inayos lang namin and ginamit namin for the sanipad. So from there, we learned and then we went on to come up with the prototype 2. And some of these pictures show you the pathogen challenge. And then dito sa last picture, you show now the fogging mechanism for the disinfection. And here, uh, this is the sanipad situated in the department of Dr. April Llaneta, and you will see one of their healthcare workers going in. So, yeah, so he goes through the disinfection process, uh, may fogging, may blower, and then later on, uh, when he comes out, so I want to show on this slide the evolution of an innovation. It's not something that from the first day, palang pag na isip mo na and then that's it. You have a perfect, beautiful sunny pad. It doesn't work that way. So we started off with this. Uh, sabi ko nga condemned air shower na dinonate lang sa amin eh. and then they have the prototype too. And then uh, with further improvements and feedback from all the workers. Uh, we are coming out with the uh, prototype 5 already by next week. And this is a quick rendition of uh, prototype 4 and 5. There you go. Looking at the exterior, the exhaust, and then as we enter, yung interior, yan yung uh, ventilation. So with the fogging, yeah, and you will see that this pipe now leads into the cubicle. No? Now, uh, inside, once we get inside, makikita nyo yung vent kung saan po mapasok yung uh, disinfectant. There you go. And then later on, makikita nyo, sa taas, makikita nyo yung blower. Yan. Okay. And then yan yung mechanism, no? For the blower. Okay, we'll cut that short and go to the next slide, which is really showing you na every time na may gumagamit, meron din kaming mechanism for feedback. So it depends on the feedback ng healthcare worker, always based on that, nag improve ang uh, prototype. And this really is a slide to show you what goes on, no? This is the work behind the scenes. So, hindi siya, uh, like I said, with one snap of a finger, next day, maganda na yung gawa. So, we've gone through so many different prototypes, so many different uh, trials and errors, uh, gone through work with microbiologists, engineers, industrial designers, uh, even choosing how to put in, how to test it, how to make sure na, na okay siya, and then the pathogen challenges to make sure na everything is evidence-based. And of course, uh, the DOST, now that we're using mainly DOST fund, 
yung uh, team uh, comes to con- uh, con- converse with us and to communicate with us to make sure that everything is going fine. No? And this is a picture that we took last month when we visited our engineers at the Triple M because uh, in one of their uh, cellars, do namin ginagawa yung isang prototype. So these are our acknowledgements. We'd like to, of course, acknowledge our UP Manila Chancellor, uh, Menchit Padilla, and our UP College of Medicine Dean, uh, Charlotte Chong, because they've been uh, extremely supportive of all our work, not just for the Sanipad, but for the entire UP Seaball program. They're heavily invested in it. And acknowledgement goes to so many different people. UP Diliman, all the scientists and engineers, biochemists, biologists, uh, engineers, uh, technicians, then the, the of course, the chair of the Triple M, so UP Diliman, and then our UP Manila clinicians all the way from public health, medicine, uh, and then, of course, the entire Sanipad team. And we always will, and the work is always dedicated to these fallen healthcare workers and those of you who continue to work so hard at the front line despite all the risks. Thank you very much from the UP Seabol program and for the project Sanipod. Thank you. We hope that you learned as much as we did from that excellent presentation. We also hope that you will join us every Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Manila time on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. So stay safe, stay connected, and and see see you online. online.